Hello there again, Brandon Bailey back here with my top 10 Beatles songs that I took away from going through their entire catalog in one stretch this time. Um, has not changed much like my album's ranking has over the years, but a couple flip-flops. Really, when we're talking about like ranking your favorite Beatles songs, like the eras are hard to separate, you know, the, the early black and white era from the Technicolor psychedelic and then beyond in the Abbey Road and Let It Be era. Um, so it's just so hard divvying them all out. Like, you know, it. my list is what it is, but at the end of the day, what I will say is that you're not going to find Hey Jude on this list or Let It Be or anything. If you're looking for that, they are great, classic, important songs. But when, it, when I think about it, it's like, which ones can I listen to over and over and over and over again? And, like, th these songs here are those songs. And there's many more by them that are like that, too. But it's just, <laughs> it's just not going to be typical. I'm warning you. So, number 10. Um, this one might be a surprise. I know this one's talked down on a little bit, even by its creator, John Lennon. We have my only song from Let It Be on here, Dig a Pony. And the reason I like this song might have to do with playing it on the Beatles rock band, which many of my favorite songs might have something to do with that. But I love the guitar riff in it. What's the most interesting to me as a guitar player is just the cool riffs and ideas they had that nobody else was doing. And like something like dig a pony like that boom but boom like it's just so weird like of a riff but it's so catchy and good and then the lyrics you know it's to me it's just like such a, a sexy like kind of song and then like the the guitar solo in it, it's definitely one of george's like smoothest it's so good and the fact that it was recorded on the rooftop and it sounds this good is just amazing. Like, they just did it, and it came out the way it is. It's just such a good song. I kind of hate that it gets downplayed a bit, but I, I couldn't leave it off the list. Um, number nine, we have She Said, She Said. Um, and this is another one I feel is underrated. I know a lot of people love it, but I don't feel like it often makes people's top lists. Uh, but the, I think the Black Keys, were their cover of it is what kind of got me to notice this song a little bit more. They have such a cool, um, like, garage two-piece cover of this song. It kind of blows my mind how they pulled it off. But the, the Beatles version of it, like, Ringo's drumming on it is... It might be my favorite drum song from Ringo. Like, he's he's got other ones like Rain and, and stuff like that. But this one or... It's just crazy. Like, his parts are crazy. And I love John's lyrics. I love his melodies and the riffs and the chord progression. Um, it's kind of got, like, a bluesy vibe with the lyrics, but it's still so rock and roll. And the, the production with the panning and everything and the editing is just so mind-boggling. It's kind of trippy, um, even though it's still a rocker-like kind of song. But, yeah, love love all the work on, on She Said, She Said. Number eight, we got another one off of Revolver. We have Tomorrow Never Knows. Um, obviously, the song's not underrated by any means. It's such a technological breakthrough in recording and engineering and stuff. But yeah, like I love trippy music and songs that just really like put you far out there, man. And uh, this is just one of those songs, the the back masking and his lyrics from Timothy Leary's Psychedelic Experience book, like the seven verses that make up the seven um, layers of the acid trip or whatever, which is influenced by the Tibetan Book of the Dead. It's so cool, so out there for its time and just opened a lot of people up to those kinds of ways of thinking, brought it into the pop culture has that those crazy back masked guitar solos and leads in it um and the drum beat the drum beat alone is it's got it's it might be in my number one like if we're just talking about a standard beat in itself the beat from tomorrow never knows might be my favorite drum beat of all time it's it's hard to say i have to think about that for another video but it has to be said but yeah such a great trippy psychedelic song love it 
Um, number seven, moving a little slightly further ahead, um, we got the very first heavy metal song ever written, um, supposedly, allegedly, allegedly, but um, we got Helter Skelter, of course, I'm talking about. Um, so, I mean, what can be said about how important this song is for me? I mean, it's what single-handedly made me very interested in them. And and not just because of the whole Charles Manson thing or anything like that. That stuff's all stupid and, to me, only takes away from the real mystique of their music and shit and, this, and the White Album. But yeah, like, Helter Skelter is just such a fun heavy rocker song like the the way it just snaps in like the guitar sounds like just that it just flies in out of nowhere all of the guitars just fly in out of nowhere in this song and again one of the greatest drum beats of all time super simple but super effective powerful um super simple lyrics i love how some of it's kind of like an elvis impersonation and just, you can really feel how hard they were working on this, too. Like, it's one of their songs that they have the most takes on, notoriously. And, you know, the I've got blisters on my fingers line at the end really <laughs> tries that home. But yeah, like, the way it cuts out, and then they bring in another take of it, and then it drops out again, and then they come back in with the fade out. Just groundbreaking stuff, super important, and I'll never get tired of the song, or playing it, as a matter of fact, because I cover it often, but anyway, moving on, um, to a song that's maybe a little less talked about, <clears throat> maybe not, I don't know, at number six, we have Happiness is a Warm Gun, and the reason I said I don't know about that is because I do feel like this song is examined quite a bit for um, not only the lyri the weird lyrics, but, like, the rhythms of this song. This is one of their most progressive songs, like, rhythmically and stuff. The way it changes up its meters is <laughs> ridiculous. Like, if you're not paying attention, it'll fucking, it'll lose you. But, like, to count this song out is really fun as, you know much as that just sounds like my musician <laughs> brain talking um but yeah i just love how weird and trippy the lyrics are and they're just they are kind of like joyous in a sense too by the time it reaches the end um and it's just such a cool example of john and paul like collaborating with their own different takes on like where the song should go love how it's all like joined together by its different sections too um really cool you know Number five, uh, we got a controversial one probably here. I mean, I'm sure it's got its fans, especially people who, um, without spoiling it at all, are huge George Harrison fans. But number five, I have the Raga inspired Within You, Without You. And, you know, it was hard for me to not put the... Um, the love Cirque du Soleil version that's on the Beatles rock band, the Tomorrow Never Knows slash Within You Without You, like the way they combine both of those and use the drum beat behind Within You Without You is super impactful and it's so cool. And the visual from that game is kind of what got me into the song in the first place. But as with Tomorrow Never Knows, the reason that I have them separated, um, there's just elements of each that like putting them in their own spot together like that wouldn't have done it justice in this list to me. Like, Within You, Without You, uh, like, what's missing from that remix version is, you know, the huge orchestrated, like, string solo and section and how it, it the violins are, like, dueling with the sitar lines and the way it all builds and, you know, you miss a verse out of it. But, yeah, I, like, that's what I would be missing with that. And... I just love Within You Without You as a complete package. Um, I know it, like, it kind of, like, doesn't fit on the album, but there is other sitars and other swirly textures on Sgt. Pepper, so it, it doesn't stick out that much like a sore thumb to me. And I don't think it's cultural appropriation. I mean, it's we should be thankful that we even know about this stuff having because of George you know, getting obsessed with it and everything. I think it's awesome and such an essential part of the music of the world. 
And, uh, you know, it, it truly is a meditative piece. The lyrics are super important and, you know, awesome. They're on some other shit. So, number four, we got uh, Octopus's Garden from the Abbey Road album. Uh, <laughs> I know I listed that as my favorite album by them, but this is my only song from it on here. Spoiler alert. Uh I couldn't not not put it on here. I know a lot of people are like, oh, it's such a silly song. It's Ringo's song, you know, the Family Guy skit where he's like, I wrote a song about an octopus. And they're like, I'll put it on the fridge, Ringo. Like, fuck that shit, dude. Like, it's a great song. Beautiful song. Such a happy, joyous, trippy song. And it's like super influential to me. Like the effects they do with those watery vocals. I think John stuck his head underwater and recorded like the gurgling sounds. Like it's so interesting. Um, and the fact that Ringo can play this song and sing it at the same time is like more power to him. One of George's best, most outshining guitar parts to the way it even opens. It just lets you know it's going to be a guitar song. And the solo, so beautiful, like, especially with the backing vocals carrying it behind it. Like, it's just such a peaceful, nice song, and to just dismiss it as some sort of childish, like, garbage is, it's really just unfair, and yeah. I think most people know that it's good guitar work, but I just think it's a beautiful song, too. Um, and my favorite off of that album, obviously. Aside from the Abbey Road medley, I should say that. I couldn't include the entire Abbey Road medley. Like, that is pretty awesome. But, anyway, number three, got another one that is often shit on all the time. I, it's always in people's top worst Beatles songs, and I hate it. I hate it. Um, talking about Savoy Truffle, George Harrison's awesome song from the White Album. Any song <laughs> where Eric Clapton gets dissed is going to be one of my favorites. And uh, as much as this song <laughs> in itself makes me feel subconscious about my terrible teeth, um, yeah, it's just so funny <laughs> that his way of taking a stab at Clapton and the whole affair between them and their girlfriends or wives <laughs> or whatever at the time... Um, he did that through, you know, Clapton having an addiction to chocolates and candies and it <laughs> ruining his mouth. Um, just always found that to be completely hilarious and just such a cool song. It, the song kind of has a sort of menacing atmosphere about it because of that. And uh, put aside the lyrics, I love the music of it as well. It brings in George's classic use of um, like brass in there too. And the, the weird, like, descending and um, just ever-changing, modulating chord progression of the song itself is super cool. The, the kind of, like, battling, like, dueling of the horn section and then the guitar solo, like, during the solo section. One of my favorite George solos. It's not, like, super crazy, but I just love the, his note choices in it and the tones of it and stuff. It's just such a fun, upbeat song. Uh, you know, it's just fun to play, fun to sing along to. Um, don't understand how people put it off, but it's always been one of my favorites and most underrated off the White Album. Um, anyway, that was my last off the White Album. At number two, we have a song that I tried not to spoil too much in the Albums Rankings video. We have um, Hey Bulldog off of the soundtrack for um yellow submarine and like i said in the review like don't understand like what happened to this song in the movie you know like why is it on the soundtrack i mean it, it must have been planned for it and then like because the beatles didn't really have much say in what happened in the movie or much involvement anyway it probably just never ended up there who knows if it ever even got an animated scene i don't know um that was, like, cut from it. But, yeah, I, I'm i glad we did get it, though, because it really is one of those Beatles gems that you have to dive for, and I'm glad I did. 
I think the way that I became aware of it before the Beatles rock band inclusion was a, uh, I was in music theory class and th all throughout high school. And in the first high school I was in, the music theory class was basically like we got bands of kids together and every Friday we would have to break down a song, explain it, and um, perform it and everything too. And uh, one of the bands in class um, covered Hey Bulldog. And I just remember like, this is a Beatles song, just like that riff. It's still kind of heavy too. That boom, boom, bam, 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 bam. Like that could have been a, a Sabbath riff or something. Like for real, it's got that tritone in it and stuff. Um, but yeah, the chord progression, the zany lyrics, um, you know, like the production on it, and the best part about it all, the the ever so mysterious Hey Bulldog guitar solo that I swear is George Harrison. I don't think there's any mistaking it, but you know, Paul did sometimes come in and play lead guitar. I don't think it's John or an, or another guest guitar player either, like Clapton or something. Um, we'll never really know, I don't think, but I swear it's a George solo, and it's so cool. I love the phrasing on it and all the slides and the tone. A lot of what makes their solos really cool is, like, the tones they choose. Um, but, yeah, I love how it fades out, and, you know, it goes from the B to the F-sharp section at the end, and, like, they just start getting insane <laughs> with what they're adding in the the vocals with all the laughing and carrying on and stuff and how it fades out such a cool song um but at my number one and uh i know some are probably gonna be like well you had a lot of underrated songs now like you're gonna finish with this one because it is a typical number one i think for most people but i can't deny it like my love for this song and appreciation for it we got strawberry fields forever from the magical mystery tour album but it was i think originally intended for sergeant peppers um you know obviously didn't end up in the movie which it probably could have because of the video and stuff i don't understand why but anyway it is such a magical beautiful song the way it's arranged and how psychedelic it is the chord progression of it it modulates all throughout the instrumentation in it and everything, especially when it does that beam, 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 boom. Just one of my favorite moments in music ever. <laughs> it's just so satisfying. Um, yeah, the vocals are so cool. The fact that it was stitched together between like three different takes and still cohesive somehow just blows my mind. Like that it's like one of the greatest songs ever and it was stitched together. Like what the hell? It, and it's just so swirling and vibey and, like, so cool. Like, it's a, such a cool song. Um, and it doesn't even have a guitar solo in it. If, unless you want to count, like, the little thing at the end where it comes after the last Strawberry Fields Forever and it comes in with that little... Like, there's, like, some trills and stuff. Like, maybe that's a little solo. I don't know. <laughs> it kind of stretches what you could consider a guitar solo. But... Still, just such an ornate and beautiful song. Um, you know, I know I've probably said that three times already, but, you know, ha it has to be said. It's one of my favorites of all time. And it kind of sucked to not include more off of a Magical Mystery Tour, really. Um, like, get into a little bit of uh, honorable mentions, I guess. Um, like, on Please Please Me, um, I Saw Her Standing There, you know, great. Um... Anna, Go To Him, I've always liked that one a lot, even though it's a cover, you know, Twist and Shout, obviously, I always liked, um, <clears throat> George's song on there, <clears throat> um, freaking, I don't know why the name's escaping me right now, <laughs> if, uh, you want to know a secret, yeah, sorry, <laughs> I had to think of it, so, yeah, I've always liked that one, too, but, um, could they really top any of the, the rest on the list? No. On, uh, with the Beatles, like, not many on that I could consider. Um, All My Lovin', It Won't Be Long. Those are obviously really good songs. I also really like George's Don't Bother Me as well. And, uh, The Devil in Her Heart's not bad either. Um, on, uh, Hard Day's Night, you know, you got the title track, of course. It's great. Um, can't buy me love um if i fell and i love her 
just there's so many good ones on that one too um you can't do that um anytime at all another good one uh beetles for sale you know you get eight days a week um and babies in black and kansas city hey hey or yeah hey 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 <laughs> i forgot how many times i said it but that's a good cover um i'll follow the sun every little thing like there's so, so many good ones even in the early days and then you got help and you got like um i love the night before um i need you um you're gonna lose that girl was just barely didn't make my list it was on my old top 10 list but yeah i love that song a lot it's just so defining of that middle beatles era i love it such a good catchy tune um ah, there's more on that too i do like ringo's act naturally for sure um let's see uh you've got to hide your love away and i've just seen a face awesome songs um then you know rubber soul you get stuff like in my life and you know just great songs on there too i'm looking through you um if i needed someone girl you know like every song on that's really great um but are they as great as some on Revolver, you know, for example? I don't know. Like, that was one of the things I was debating in my mind, like, putting those songs against each other, because it's just some of the best. Um, and with Revolver, yeah, I could have put Andrew Bird Can Sing on here, or um, Love You Too, or For No One, Here, There, and Everywhere. And, like, again, every song on that is just awesome as well. And it, really, that could be said from this point on. Um, but I do want to give some love to certain songs, like uh, Fixing a Hold, Sgt. Pepper is awesome. Um, you got other ones on there, too. A Day in the Life, obviously, you know, it's probably considered overrated and stuff, but, you know, it deserves its spot. Um, I even love, like, you know, the, the piano songs on there. She's Leaving Home, When I'm 64, um, Lovely Rita, even is more of a piano-based song still good songs um i think uh you know there's there's so many to name on magical mystery tour fool in the hill you know i and the walrus uh you know to name a few your mother should know baby you're a rich man you know blue jay way love them all all so trippy and the white album you know back in the ussr and you know glass onion um while my guitar gently weeps just barely didn't make it uh so many good ones mother nature's son that's one of my favorite paul mccartney songs ever one of my favorite acoustic songs ever um yeah now maybe not much on yellow submarine it's all too much maybe i do that one didn't make it on the list probably should have but i love that song it gets real crazy awesome uh, try not to carry on too much longer here. So Abbey Road, you know, Oh Darlin', I love that one. Um, Come Together, obviously, was a song that got me into them at first. And then, like, every, like Because, and then everything on the, the B-side medley. Um, if you can call it a medley, I mean, they, they are strung together, but musically, they don't feel too related. Um, uh, let's see, Let It Be, you know, I've Got a Feeling I really love, I Me Mine, really love that, Across the Universe, Two of Us, obviously, Get Back, you know, good songs, but, you know, only certain ones can make the top ten, right, it's really hard to decide, you know, and then there's the singles, you got, like, Rain, um, <clears throat> there's, there's more than that, <laughs> that I meant to say, Paperback Writer, um, Day Tripper, of course, um, you know, there's so many songs. I love George's Old Brown Shoe. That's a good underrated one. Yeah, I Feel Fine, another good one. But yeah, all all good stuff. You know, it's the, it's the Beatles, for God's sake. But that's enough of me rambling on about them, you know, and sort of trying to capitalize on the fact that everyone on YouTube, <laughs> well, not everybody, but, you know, a lot of YouTube channels are going to be talking about them with the release of new stuff out now. Um... So it is what it is, and I hope you've enjoyed it and had some insight. I will leave the link to the Spotify playlist below. I'm going to start trying to say that more often in my videos, but if you go back to any of my old top tens, there is always a Spotify link 
in the description where you can listen to all these songs and vibe out with me on them. But anyway, I'll catch you another time. I think this might be my last ranking for the year. I think I'm going to start um, doing some end of the year, album of the year, song of the year um, things now. So I will see you then in December at some point. Um, got new music out too. So if you want to listen to my music, you'll have three new EPs by the end of the year, one of which is already out. Um, so peace and love. Have a great day. Be safe out there. Please like and subscribe.